Our next topic in modern physics is called the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. Now, this is something very strange. Again, when we're dealing with very small particles, and this is, of course, in quantum mechanics or quantum physics, very strange things happen here. When we observe things, just, to, just the act of observing alone causes things to become unknown about the object. And let me show you what I mean by that. So let's say there's a, an electron right there, and we want to try to observe the electron. Now, of course, for us to realize that the electron is there, uh, something has to bounce off the electron and enter our eye so we can perceive its existence. So let's say that we have a photon coming along. It strikes the electron. It bounces off the electron. The photon then continues on to our eye, and the eye, the eye then receives the photon and says, ah, I realize that there's a electron right there. Of course, that's no longer the case because if a, if a electron scatters off of a, uh, if a photon scatters off an electron, uh, what we learned, of course, with the Compton scattering, that the electron will absorb some of that energy and then, of course, ricochet in some direction and that direction will be completely unknown because we wouldn't even know where the photon came from. And so that means that the electron could have been directed in any imaginable direction. And of course, depending upon how fast the electron is moving, which of course depends upon how much energy it absorbs from the electron, uh, from the photon, which of course would not be known, the electron could be anywhere in this circle. And of course, the faster electron, the bigger that circle becomes. So we wouldn't know how fast the electron is moving. We wouldn't know where the electron would be at. There would be a certain amount of uncertainty about its position and its velocity, or therefore also its momentum. And so they understood that, and therefore they came up with a, <clears throat> a quantization of how to figure out the uncertainty in either the position or the velocity of an object, like an electron. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we came up, or not us, some very smart individuals like Heisenberg, came up with this relationship that said that the uncertainty in the position and the uncertainty in the momentum multiplied together always has to be greater than or equal to some quantity. And they determined that that quantity was equal to h bar over 2. Now h bar is simply the Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. So if you take h divided by 2 pi and then divide that by 2, which therefore becomes h divided by 4 pi, this product will always be bigger than that. All right, so to illustrate how that works, here let's assume that we have an electron that's moving at 1,000 meters per second, and that has an uncertainty in its velocity of 100 meters per second. And then we're supposed to find out the uncertainty in that electron's position. All right, so let's use our equation. Delta x times delta p is equal to h bar over 2. And of course, for our identification, h bar is h over 2 pi, which can be written like that, 1.05 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. So we know that momentum is m times v, so we can say that delta x times delta m v is equal to h bar over 2. Since we're looking for the uncertainty in position, we can take this and move to the bottom here, and that means we can say delta x, the uncertainty in the position, is equal to h bar divided by 2 times delta m v. Now, of course, m is not the uncertainty. We know what the mass of the electron is, but the velocity would have an uncertainty of, let's say in this case, 100 meters per second. Plugging in the numbers that we have, so this would be equal to h bar, which is 1.055 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds, and divide that by 2 times the uncertainty in the velocity, so I can actually take the mass out, that would be 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, and then multiply it times the uncertainty in the velocity, which we said here was 100 meters per second, like so. And then with a calculator, we can figure out what then the uncertainty is in its position. So we have 1.055 e to the 34 minus, divided by 2, divided by 9.11 e to the 31 minus, and divide by 100. And what we get here is we get this is equal to 5.79 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, which would be 579 nanometers. All right, so what does that mean? Well, no, that's about the wavelength of visible light, but let's put things in perspective. Let's say that we find the wavelength of this electron moving at 1,000 meters per second and then compare that to the uncertainty in its position. So again, the wavelength, lambda, for an electron is equal to uh, h divided by m times v. 
So that would be equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds divided by seconds divided by the mass and multiply times the velocity, which we said was 1,000 meters per second. And let's figure out what that is equal to. So 6.626 e34 minus divided by 9.11 e to the 31 minus and divide by a thousand equals n so we get a wavelength of 727 nanometers so imagine that we have an electron that's moving at a thousand meters per second mm, that's uh, 10 football fields per second that's pretty fast it has a wavelength of 727 nanometers so here's a little electron zipping around and with a wavelength lambda equal to 727 nanometers and because of its velocity that being known with this kind of uncertainty we then have an uncertainty about its position of 579 nanometers which is almost a wavelength so where would we find the electron well somewhere and maybe I'll use a different color for that so the uncertainty in position would be somewhere in this neighborhood so that would be the delta x which in this case was 579 nanometers. And that's how you get a feel for how that uncertainty works. So if we know the, the velocity to be 1,000 meters per second with an uncertainty of about 10% in its velocity, then we'll find the uncertainty in its position almost equal to a full wavelength of its motion. And that's how you deal with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle that deals with position and momentum. There's another principle that deals with energy and time, but that will have to be our next example. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned.